So for more on why we should be gazing upwards and perhaps counting our lucky stars, we reached the host of Quirks and Quirks. Bob McDonald is in Victoria. So Bob, should we be excited or spooked about this asteroid? <laughs> Well, it's kind of funny, uh, Andrew, because uh, we've already got one of the first images of it, uh, a radar image of it, and it looks kind of spooky. It looks like a skull. It's this black thing with dark eyes, and ooh, it looks really creepy coming right towards us. But uh, from a scientific point of view, it's uh, an opportunity to have a free mission to an asteroid. We don't have to build rockets and go out and find it. It came to us. So over the next few hours, uh, the largest telescopes on Earth are going to be looking looking at this thing, and they're going to be bouncing radar waves and microwaves off this thing to try to image it as it goes by. So we should get much clearer images as the day goes on. We'll see it rotate, uh, we'll see surface features on it, and uh, just get a good look at it as it whizzes by our planet. That is just unbelievable. Let's show that image again, because it really, <laughs> this is Halloween, and you're telling me that the asteroid that is about to fly closest yeah. to Earth at around 1 p.m. <laughs> it looks like a skull. I mean, this is just too much. So there it is. That's the first image, yeah. as you say. Now, are, are you concerned, uh, Bob, that we only really found out about this three weeks ago? Um, well, yes and no. I mean, this one is coming at us from an odd direction. Most asteroids in our solar system are out between Mars and Jupiter, and they're basically on the same plane as all of the rest of the planets, the Earth and, and Mars and all, all of our planets. We all go around the sun like uh, like we're sitting on the surface of a CD with the sun at the hole in the center. So it's all pretty flat. But this thing came from underneath the solar system. It's on a very different kind of orbit. So it's coming up from below and around. And in our search for these asteroids, and there is an active program right now to try to identify all of these things out here that could threaten us, we don't usually look much in that direction. So that's why it was only seen three weeks ago. So I think we might have to think about our survey to uh, start looking in different directions for these things. All right, so let's say we had discovered it and let's say it was coming too close for comfort. What would we have been able to do about it? Well, in this case, nothing. Yeah. Uh, if it's only three weeks out, we don't have the resources on Earth. We don't have anything standing by right now that's ready to go out and try to do something about it. The only thing we can do is, uh, if we did have something like that, is to try to nudge it just a little bit. If you can get it uh, when it's far enough away, a little further than three weeks, actually, just nudge it a bit, it would miss the Earth. But otherwise, the only thing that we could do is to evacuate the area where it's going to hit. And the scientists would be able to predict exactly where it's going to come down. Out. So they could say, okay, it's going to hit uh, Scarborough, Ontario, and it's going to hit at exactly 1.03 this afternoon, then everybody would have to get out of there. But I don't know how you do that. How do you, how do you evacuate people because something this size would cause destruction all the way out to Nova Scotia? So it's, uh, it's pretty sad. And, and I think that we need to think about having something ready. It should be an international effort to have something ready to go at any time. At the moment, we don't have anything like that. So, um, why is that, Bob? Because it's the size of two uh, state. Why don't we have anything to do well, anything about it? Well, that's one question. But also, in terms of the devastation, it's the size of, if I understand, full uh, two, two stadiums uh, or two, yeah. something like that. So, why would something that, I mean, that, that is big, but it's not necessarily that big. Why would it devastate an area all the way to Nova Scotia? Well, it's, uh, it's not as, you're right, it's not as big as the one that knocked out the dinosaurs. That was, uh, that was much larger. That caused planet-wide destruction. The reason these things do so much damage is because they're traveling very fast. This thing's doing about, uh, oh, I don't know, 40,000 kilometers an hour. Like, that's many, many times faster than a rifle bullet. And if you think about a bullet, it's not very big, but it's going so fast, it'll do a lot of damage to your body. So it's their speed, all of that energy that they carry. And when they hit the Earth, all that energy is turned into, into heat and you get these enormous explosions, and then you get stuff blown up into the atmosphere, you get dust that comes down and covers the sun. So that's the problem, is that they're going so fast. Now, what we have working for us is the fact that there aren't very many of them that actually cross our orbit. Um, they're, they're few and far between, but we still haven't identified them all. We've identified the big ones, the ones that, the dinosaur killers, those we know about, and there's nothing like that coming our way. But these smaller ones, they're a little trickier to find, and they can still surprise us once in a while. So I think we got to do something about uh, getting ourselves a little more prepared than we are at the moment. Let's show that image one more time, because it's really something else as we continue to talk <laughs> there, Bob. Come on, look at this. It does look like a skull. That's unbelievable. By the okay. way, this was taken by the National Astronomy and Ionosphere uh, uh, Center. So there it is. Now, yeah. would 
I, 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 you know, this is about to pass at 105 Eastern, so that's in about 20 minutes from now. Yeah. Would there be, I guess there's no way for anyone to see it with the naked eye. You have to have some really... No, no. Yeah. You need, you need a telescope and you need to know where to look. But uh, what you're seeing here is a phenomenon called uh, that where, where the human eye tries to make faces. We're, we're very good at that. But what you're looking at are probably uh, just craters on its surface. Asteroids have very rough surfaces, uh, like the moon does. So that could be what that is. But we'll resolve that later on today. We're going to see better pictures, and we'll also see it from different sun angles. They just chose that picture to, to show everybody just because it's Halloween and it's kind of fun. But it's not actually a skull. I don't think. Uh, we know. don't know, do we, Bob? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Great to talk to you as always. Okay, Andrew. Bob McDonald is the host of Quirks and Quirks, and we reached him from Victoria.